Hey, what's up guys? It's Fahrenheit. Today, I wanted to do something I've been meaning to do for a while on this channel, and that's uh, talking about movies and, and anime and stuff like that, stuff that I like to watch, and add that as a part of, you know, of the channel, since it's something that I'm into. Uh, and who knows, some of you guys out there might be into it as well. I figure, you know, today, I wanted to talk about a movie I recently saw, uh, Marvel's, or Disney Marvel's, Captain Marvel. I think what I'm going to do is more just kind of give my impressions of the movie. I don't know if it's going to be much of a, a review or a critique exactly. I don't know. I probably will critique it a bit just because, you know, I have my own kind of sensibilities as an artist and whatnot and how I see film. And so I might add some of that in there, but I don't really have a system for this yet. So I'm just going to kind of go off the cusp with this. I'm going to keep this spoiler free as much as I can. So anyway... Captain Marvel. The basic premise of the film, for anyone who doesn't know, it's uh, Marvel's latest film, their latest character, Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, and she's a part of this intergalactic task force. So she's a part of this special task force. The thing about her is that she's kind of got fragmented memory. There's a lot of things she doesn't really remember about her past, and basically the movie is like a buddy cop film of her, Captain Marvel, which is actually star uh, played by Brie Larson. She teams up with Samuel L. Jackson's character, Nick Fury. Together, they attempt to stop a shape-shifting alien race known as the Scrolls, who have showed up on Earth and they can impersonate virtually anyone at any time. The scrolls have appeared on Earth, apparently looking for something that has been left on Earth that is of significant power and value. So it's left up to Carol and Fury to figure out what that is the scrolls are looking for, beat them to the punch, ultimately halting the scrolls' plan, all the while Carol attempts to piece back together her shattered memories that seems to be causing her a lot of angst and aggravation, frustration, while she attempts to fulfill her mission that she believes is the right course of action. First of all, I enjoyed the movie. I think the movie was dope. It was a lot of fun. I love I, the characters are really cool. It's definitely action packed. I love the action in the film. They have some really cool set pieces. It was funny. One of the things I noticed right at the beginning of the film is the dialogue in the film, like the first couple bits of dialogue, kind of like, okay, that was kind of weird. But then it keeps the pace moving. So even if like something doesn't land, like if a joke doesn't land or like dialogue might not be so great at first the pace keeps itself moving that you're right back to that next joke so that's one of the things i noticed like before i knew it we're already into the action like right away you already got some jokes kicking from some characters that you wouldn't expect to be making jokes but they do it in a way that really fits the character's style you know, like there's certain characters that are part of the Star Force that aren't like jokey type of goofy characters, but they make it funny with the way they deliver their lines. There's a particular uh, joke with, uh, I think, the character Korath. I, I can't remember the actor's name. I think Dijmon Hansu, I think it is. I you, you guys have seen Guardians of the Galaxy. If you've seen that, he was one of the um, Ronin, the destroyers, or his right-hand man, I guess. He's a part of the Star Force because he's a Kree, just like Ronin. They, they have a joke with him in it, and it, it's, it's he doesn't crack jokes exactly, but he has his one joke that he makes. It's, it's, it's pretty funny um it's it's him and the rest of the star force together so the jokes are funny the chemistry between samuel l jackson and brie larson is really good it pretty much makes the movie those two together they make a great pair um you could tell they enjoy working together uh i love seeing them both on screen at the same time even you know just seeing the two actors but even seeing them as characters as carol and fury it's so cool to see this new superhero this new hero she's trying to figure out you know her past trying to find herself you know figure out this mystery about who she is and how she fits into the world world and the universe at large because she's coming from another planet and another galaxy another solar system and seeing fury who all this time we've seen him as this much more cold and calculated type of character throughout the marvel cinematic universe and through agents of shield and all that he's a lot more serious you don't you see a completely different type of fury in this movie and it's really cool to see this younger uh, more fun loving i say fun loving but he's he's a he's a bit more open to a joke he's a bit more light light-hearted he's not as strict and cold seems more of an easygoing guy i think that's a good way to uh, to put it and it's cool to see see him in this time and seeing uh, the people he interacted with during that time you know Coulson was there um seeing him he's a lot he's much more reserved he's not really the leading man like he was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. took charge he cracked jokes he's very witty and this one he's a lot more reserved because he's he's new to uh to S.H.I.E.L.D. so he's a lot more reserved um but Fury he's a lot more easygoing and it's really cool to see that and it's cool to see that dynamic between a more easygoing younger Fury and Carol Danvers also one of the things that I really liked about the movie is the visual style of the film like 
the, there's certain effects and stuff that they use. Um, their technology and their ships uh, look really cool. The Star Force suits are really awesome. I love the Star Force suits. I love how like they have like the masks that they just kind of appear on their faces, and then they have like the visor thing that goes down over their mouth that you can kind of see transparently through, and it's like blue. That looks really dope. They look super cool. I love the designs of their their technology and the designs of the suits and stuff, and how they kind of like they they tr like open up and transmutate or whatever you would call it. I really think those are cool. The effects are really cool in the movie, with uh, especially when it comes to like Captain Marvel and the stuff that she does. They do some really cool stuff with her effects. I guess an another thing too that I, I think, as I'm thinking about it, I would I, I should mention is that being that this movie takes place in the '90s, and I was a kid growing up in the '90s, it's such a weird thing to see something like that because I never really imagined that the time that I grew up in would ever be considered a time of the past. It's such a strange feeling to see you at like the era that you grew up in as a kid and look at that and be like wow that was a different era than where we are now it doesn't even feel like it was that long ago <laughs> that's the thing that's crazy it doesn't even feel like we've been out of the 90s all that long that's, that's what's so so wild and so it's it's interesting to see how they really took that time period and brought that to life in the movie through the music through the clothing choices through the some of the locations they go to it's a really interesting thing to see that the technology and what that was like with pay phones and dial up and stuff like that it's it's one of those things where it's like 90 the 90s aren't the 80s or the 70s or the 60s or the 50s where you, you don't think about like 90s as an era you know what I'm saying at least I don't like I don't think about the 90s as an era but I guess it kind of is its own era you know and, and, and it was interesting to see that kind of encapsulated in this movie uh, there were some cool Easter eggs there's some stuff that I appreciated some stuff I didn't understand and, and didn't catch until after uh, I've heard other people talking about them and I was just like oh okay that's cool so there's definitely some 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 pretty cool Easter eggs in there and I appreciate that stuff too so I enjoyed the characters and the acting was really good I enjoyed a Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson's chemistry together was was excellent I, the special effects were really awesome the, the chase sequences and the action and the special effects were really good I mean there were certain points where the special effects did have like a CGI ish look to it but honestly like it's definitely like upper class you know Marvel Disney but budget special effects like the, the the cg looks good there are certain instances where it does look kind of like cg but it looks like good cg you know I, I don't have any complaints when it comes to that stuff they did a really good job of making carol look like a badass when she's doing certain you know captain marvel e things and the effects that she uses look really dope now one of the things i think i may have a gripe with though a little bit and i can see other people having a, a gripe with this i feel like the pacing of the film may have been a little bit slow at times there's certain points where I feel like the movie might slow down a little bit and it might be a little boring for some people the only other gripe I think I probably have is towards the end you know when there's the big finale I really wanted them to really let Captain Marvel really go go to town like she does some really cool stuff like, she does some cool stuff, but I really wanted her, I wanted them to push it a little bit further, like, just a, just a tad further, and have her really go wild, you know, but that's just, that's just, that's just me, personally, I would have liked them to just push it a little bit further, but I think they did a good job, um, really showcasing how powerful she is, and it, how cool it really looks, you know. Now, one of the things that I think they did a good job, they did a, they did a pretty good job here considering the character that they have and how powerful she is. I think they get a they get a good job with making her human, like in terms of her motivations, in terms of what makes her a hero. You know, as as she's she's trying to piece together her fragmented memory, she she really has to try and come to terms with who she is and, you know, what she stands for, you know. And I think they considering how powerful she is, I think they did a good job with how they ended the movie it was one of those things where I was interested in how they were going to do that with with Carol because of how powerful she is and it, I think they did a good job with describing how why she's so powerful in the Marvel Cinematic Universe if you ever see the first Iron Man movie or uh Spider-Man Homecoming you know if you if you watch movies like those I think those movies they do a good job of taking the hero and stripping them down and really upping the stakes you know where the 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 villain now has uh, so much power Power and they have at the advantage and the hero has to get by without all their gadgets or without being at full strength they really have to dig deep and you have to find they have to find what makes them a true hero you know and I think Iron Man did a great job with that his opponent
assistant at the end is someone with a bigger suit than his and he's just tossing him around and by the end of it he you know stark he he doesn't even have he doesn't have his helmet anymore he just has a shield and he's he's between a rock and a hard pr- place and he has to determine he has to figure out what makes him a hero what makes him iron man what makes him tony stark is it the suit or is it his intellect is it his genius is it his hard work the stuff that nobody sees everybody sees him being a playboy and all this but they don't they don't see how much work and effort he puts into his creations you know behind the scenes when he's in the lab you know doing everything that he does that leads up to his suits you know leads up to the technology so they just see the superficial part they just see the results they see the product at the end they don't see the hard work so his what makes iron man iron man isn't the suit it's the intellect right that's what makes stark so so valuable and you you look at spider-man it was the same thing and it was perfect in homecoming because in homecoming and i I don't want to talk about these too much because i'll probably talk about those movies in you know another video at some point uh because i want to go back and maybe talk about some movies you know retroactively in spider-man homecoming they do something very similar which it was very appropriate they had iron man you know tony stark talk to peter parker and tell him that if you believe the suit is what makes you a hero then you're not a hero right because that's that's he had to learn that himself they both so he's passing that knowledge on he's passing that experience and that that hard lesson on to parker and parker had to dig deep and realize it's not about the suit right there's something inside you you know that you when when the chips are down and you have to dig deep and be that hero that that those that those moments when you really want to quit so bad and it doesn't seem like anyone's in your corner that's what makes you a hero right that's what does it that's the when everyone else would give up you didn't right that's that's a good way to really test your hero at, at, for the finale but the thing about it is captain marvel's so powerful i was really wondering like how are they going to do anything like that for her and so what they what i think they did instead and i think this works well uh, maybe not for everyone but i think is that this is the direction they decided to go in and i think considering it's the direction they went in it works well and that direction is that they decided to to instead of tearing her down and making her weaker for the finale what actually ends up happening is she becomes more powerful for the finale but that's because throughout the movie she was always limited the whole movie she was being tamed she was being trained she was being restricted by the end and and hopefully i'm not spoiling i don't want to give any spoilers here but by the end she she's able to really tap into her full power and 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 then sweet that's when you see why she's so powerful you get to see what she's capable of i think her having that power but deciding that she's going to be a human being about it like she decides she realizes that she's going to use it to protect people she's going to use it to protect those she cares about she's going to use it to protect not only earth and, and humans and her friends and her family but she's going to use it to protect other creatures she wants to use it to help the universe for those in need for those who cannot protect themselves regardless of where they are and i think that is actually a, also a good way to to challenge your hero you, you put them in a position where they have so much power and you 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 put them in a situation where it's just like well how are you going to how do you choose to use this power are you going to become drunk with this power or do you actually use it for the good of others who can't help themselves you could actually use it to help others and that's what makes you a hero and i think that's more of the direction they went in with carol danvers and captain marvel and i I like that i actually appreciated that so yeah man i i mean i was i was wondering how you know brie larson would depict carol danvers you know captain marvel and i think they i think she did a good job you know in terms of what they were going for with the character to contrast the kree who were they're very focused and almost mechanical in their pursuit of their their completing their missions carol is much more emotional you know because she's part human and she's also fighting with the frustration of not really knowing who she is and so that come i think that she brie larson does a good job of conveying that that frustration that angstiness um but also what i personally liked about her is she's got this air about her where she's 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 got a sass to her like there's certain times where she just make a certain expression and she just she give you like this look like "Uh uh-huh yeah okay like and i'm just i like that sass because it's like i she this gives her this look like she knows her stuff you know she's confident in her abilities i like that i like i like a little that sass that little confidence I like that. So I was I was happy with her portrayal of Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel. So yeah, guys, those are my impressions. That's how I feel about the movie. I mean, if I were to give it a score, and I was thinking about doing this kind of thing, you know, giving scores to things, I would give my, say, objective score would be an 8 out of 10. I'd say an 8 out of 10 objectively, and the reason why I say objectively is because I think most people, like a general audience, could go and see this movie and have a ton of fun. Me personally, if I'm giving a subjective score as a fan of the 
character as an artist, as someone who's a bit more critical on certain things when it comes to different art forms, I personally will give it a 7 out of 10 if I were to give it a score. That doesn't mean I like it less, it just means that I'm more critical of certain things from the movie in terms of like, the, like I said, the pacing and I wanted to see her do more as Captain Marvel, you know, during the finale. I wanted to see a bit more, maybe even a bit more between Carol and Fury, just a little bit more because the chemistry was so good. Pretty much every scene the cat was in was fun. Now, one thing I didn't care for was the explanation for how Fury got his scar in his eye. That's something that maybe some people might like because they attempt to subvert expectation with the explanation. But for me personally, I think I would have rather them go into a more predictable direction with how he got his scar because I just feel like that would have fit Fury's character better. But maybe not. You know, some people might like that. But I can see some people kind of like rolling their eyes like, really? That's how he got it? So I wasn't so crazy about that myself. But I still really like the movie a lot. So that's my, those are my impressions slash critique slash review slash whatever of Captain Marvel. Let me know what you guys think. You know, anyone who's seen the movie, you know, what you think about it. Sound off in the comment section. Let me know. We start a dialogue, all that good stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Fahrenheit out.